Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and, and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. <laughs> the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus turns everything on its head. It does not appear at first to be the case. When John the Baptist is arrested and Jesus begins to preach saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, it sounds like he's simply filling in the place that John had been filling before he was arrested. But by the very fact that it is now Jesus who is proclaiming the kingdom and the call to conversion, something radically new has taken place. John prepared the way. Jesus is the way. John is the last of the Old Testament prophets and the greatest among them. Today the old is passing away and behold, Jesus is doing something new. The something new that Jesus is doing, however, is not new for the sake of novelty. He is not beginning a new trend which, like so many trends we encounter in this world, come and go. Jesus inaugurates the new and eternal covenant, the covenant ratified in his own precious blood, which he gives freely for our sakes on the cross, and which he offers to the Father at every Mass as both priest and victim. Jesus' kingdom is the one that St. Paul begs the Corinthians in our second reading to recognize as radically different from any worldly society. Paul calls for unity, the same unity which is one of the four marks of the church, which we will confess in the creed shortly. True unity necessarily takes into account that other mark of the church we will confess, that of Catholicity. And so the unity of the kingdom that Christ proclaims today is exactly not the same thing as the uniformity that the worldly society seeks to impose 
in order to get us all to have the same mind and same purpose. The unity of Christ's kingdom, rather, calls us to greater personal conversion. It is a unity that can only come about, first of all, in our own hearts. Our hearts are wounded and divided because of the effects of original sin and because of the wounds we inflict upon them through our own personal sins. The kingdom of heaven, which Jesus says is at hand, and which is Jesus himself, is inaugurated in this life in the heart of each Christian, or it is not inaugurated. I must desire with St. Paul to belong to Christ. I must beg the Lord to help me to accept my deep poverty, which, is, which the disappointments, the hurts, and the apparent setbacks in my life, including the realization of my own sins, reveal to me. I must bring this poverty to Jesus, who reminds me of the poverty of those he called today in the gospel, poor fishermen of no account to anyone. He called them because they were of no account to anyone. Nobody in society at large cared about them. Their pride brought them no success in this world besides feeding themselves and their families. So they could need Jesus, and they did need Jesus, so much so that when he called them, they gave up all of the very little they had and followed him. Our hearts are very poor. We need Jesus. We need the desire St. Paul begged the Corinthians to have, the desire to say, I belong to Christ. I belong to the one who will not teach me how to be successful and well-liked in this world. I belong to the one who loves me enough to slowly and gently reveal my deep poverty to myself and ask me to trust that he loves me in that poverty, which is mine, which, since it is a real poverty, makes him the only one who can truly love me in the depths of it, since it includes even my own sins. John's proclamation did not go so deep as this, but Jesus does. He wants all of us, especially what no one else wants. And this is true for all of us. This is just another reason that he gives all of himself to us, on the cross, in the sacraments, including his body and blood at this Mass, which joins our deep poverty to his incomprehensible majesty.